this this girl right here unreliable and the teacher comes in kicks the door in he's like be ready be <laughs> ready you're like spraying the walls with diarrhea you're like he's in like, fact if he's already for if he's always ready for combat he's got his knife to her stomach right now does it have does the monorail have a view of the city shut it down shut it down there could the be a public, nice view of the, shut it down shut it down the public may enjoy it it's one of the most vulnerable parts of a human body and it's like yeah. right there and he's just like whatever it's fine like i don't feel anything so at the beginning of the movie they talk about a little bit of the lore uh let's watch and see what they say extreme temperatures and treacherous weather events with sandstorms powerful enough to cut through metal make life outside the cities of arrakis truly hostile only the native tribes known as the fremen have adapted well enough to survive the fremen share the deep desert with the giant sandworms Squats. known to the fremen as shai hulud long shai exposure hulud. to spice shai has given the tribe their characteristic blue eyes the eyes of ibad little else is known of the fremen except that they are dangerous and unreliable doesn't this sound like propaganda to you that sounds like it's propaganda. just broad stroking a whole people as unreliable what and then an entire planet, an entire an entire planet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, how can an entire planet be unreliable? Like that, their their culture would fall apart. That's right. And there's like individuals within the front. No, 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 no. They're all unreliable. This this girl right here, unreliable. That's right. They have to be unreliable. It's it's not helpful intelligence to for navigating the culture to just be like mm, unreliable. And to say that like the sands can cut through metal, like is there a part is there a part of the planet that does this? Or it's like any metal <laughs> touches the surface, it's like wind <laughs> just cuts it through. I mean So we have like what sandblasting as a technology in the modern day for I guess cleaning things or like stripping paint off metal. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. These yeah, little absolutely. gritty things. Yeah. But you're talking about global winds with gusts that are like essentially sandblasting places yeah. wouldn't, wouldn't like the entire planet just be flat that's right how would any mountains exist it would they would get that sand blasted down that's right especially if it's like soft this is like soft sandstone it's that's like right. layered stuff i mean if it's it would just be it would be gone it would be, not be there look at this smooth planet <laughs> full of people that are like barely like mm -hmm. they people walk out as sand blasted are gone it feels yeah, so like old data. It feels like someone mm -hmm. from several generations ago that like went mm -hmm. down to this planet and then they're like, oh, this place is awful. And like, hey, this one this one like monument is not doing well. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, my gosh, the winds cut it down. Like, yeah, it's like it's. Yeah, the winds did not cut it down. It sounds like an exaggeration from a single traveler who maybe is getting a little poetic with the descriptions, but it's not reality. I mean, we could see I, I mean, behind I mean, I mean, there's a mountain there's a mountain right there <laughs> clearly not broken down but but the, there is some truth like like wind erosion that totally mm -hmm. happens like and especially the wind erosion is especially strong when it can pick up a little bits of grit little bits of sand yep. sand is harder than the rock around it It nails the rock and mm -hmm. it grinds it down check out utah utah's super cool yeah so so higher than earth or typical erosion rates it's still super slow it's not sand yeah. blasting yeah. Yeah, but I guess totally if different. you're from the Atreides planet, I forget the name of their planet, but I guess if you're from there and you don't see these sand winds ever, then you're just like, oh my gosh, this oh. is, I'm going to hyper focus in on it. It's a shock. And I guess if you had a vehicle and it had like paint on it, mm -hmm. as it's exposed to the wind, it's getting, the paint is getting stripped off because it's getting mm -hmm. hit by these little pieces of sand. So yeah, sand it, would, it would draw my attention to it. Yeah. It would draw my attention. Yeah. But still, it does not feel like an accurate representation. It feels like propaganda. Agreed. It feels a little propaganda-y. Is that a word? Sure. Propagandaful. Propagandaful. There we go. And then we go... Well, let's hear... There's more lore about the spice. Spice. The spice. Spice. For the Imperium, spice is used by the navigators of the Spacing Guild to find safe paths between the stars. Sure. Without spice, interstellar travel is impossible making it by far the most valuable substance in the universe. So I, I do know in the Dune universe that there has been this, like, they, they stopped AI research. And so they can't really use advanced computing to do this interstellar navigation. Um, so they rely on spiced up people to do the navigation, I right. guess, the regular mentats, people. The, the mentats that are like these kind of computer human hybrids, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
but they say they need to like navigate through the stars uh stars are far apart like <laughs> that's right that's right it's not just like they're li- they're like a little bit far apart it's like the volume of space that stars take up is essentially zero so like, you don't even have to worry about it if i choose right. a random vector right. and I'm, i'll travel that direction the chances that i hit a star from here to the edge of the universe is so tiny that I essentially do not have to worry about it. Right. So, I, I mean, I mean, this... I mean, I mean, stars are big. Stars are big. Like we look at our sun, it's big. It's mm-hmm. like super big compared to the Earth, right? But on the on the solar system, I guess beyond the solar system scale, on the galactic scale, they're effectively nothing. Like we can approximate it like a point mass, and and our approximations are good. Like you can point yeah. any direction and go, and you're you're totally fine. So why do we need? drugged up people to navigate this also also what is this thing isn't this isn't this like an exit point to a hyperlane like you yeah. just go from one of these things to another one of these things why do you need yeah. to navigate stars at all and i, I yeah, guess you just stars move but not that fast like like, like it's not like you're gonna right. uh, stars gonna move into your path like it's gonna stars gonna move into the path between two hyperlanes in over the course of a billion or a trillion you're like you're fine you're fine it's not yeah. gonna take well, this thing's in. This thing looks like it's in orbit of the planet. Yeah. So if it's in orbit of the planet, it's gravitationally bound to the planet. So it's just gonna. It's just gonna fly along with the star as it moves. So there's Ooh, no gosh. problem. Actually, if if this thing's orbiting the planet, isn't there a risk that this could be on the wrong side of the planet, and you like you end up jumping through the planet? Like like say if someone's coming from beneath the planet right now, they would misalign with this thing. I guess. I'm picturing it as a wormhole, and the opening of the wormhole is <laughs> that's even the worse. Here. <laughs> that's even worse Bec- because if it's a wormhole, then why do you need to navigate stars at all? It goes from your point in space to their point in space and just connects them, and then you just appear there. Yeah, you just like do 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 going through. I'm getting a feeling that these mentats don't actually need the spice to you to navigate stars. They just tell people that because they like to get high and they got the emperor <laughs> getting. Have you got the emperor like doing power battles so that where people like <laughs> mine the spice and like yeah we totally need this. We just like to be high all the time. Like no no no, we need it. We need it to navigate the stars. And and you know if you got in that position, you don't want to turn off the gravy train. That's right. You know, what are, getting actually, paid. Actually, what, what are you going <laughs> to? You're getting paid to get high on, on <laughs> yeah. space faring ships. You had like a guaranteed job forever. Also, if you ever expose that you don't need the drugs, well, like now you're in a you're a bunch of trouble. Right. So you're incentivized to like, like, can we jump to the next star system? Like, oh, I got to go to my secret room, Wait, my secret calculation layer. You roll up a dollar high. bill. <laughs> and you're like, <laughs> 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 okay, okay, we can we go. We, we I think we must learn more in the the new movies coming up about how exactly this interstellar navigation works because based on what i'm seeing here i'm not seeing some complex super high humans needed mentats right. to do this kind it's, of, to do this it's like humans of the past figured this thing out and then they just use it now yeah we'll we'll see well i think we'll see, see coming up it's got to be more complicated than just a tube yeah yeah, yeah. agreed so they use these tubes to talk to people from other planets. This is the emperor sending a convoy to talk to the. Look at oh, look at this ramp. Look how slow. Oh, look kind of fast. So heavy. Fast. A bit how much will it cost them? Traveling all this way, three guild navigators, a total of one point four six million sixty two salaries round trip. You can see on his face. You can see on his face like. This should have been an email. <laughs> like, why, 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 why are we doing this? Why are we having an in-person meeting? Like, please just get me on Zoom. Like, please just email me. Yeah, and I guess the other question is: Is it a lot of money? That it act like it's a Good lot point. of money, but is it? I guess we're assuming based on the reaction that it's a lot of money, but we have no context for knowing if a million whatever's what is the currency? It's a lot of money. I have no idea. A lot of money. He said a bunch of money. So. If this should have been an email, this means, and it's expensive, this means that the emperor or empire or imperium is doing extravagant ceremonies that they can't afford, right? That's right. Well, I guess I don't know if they can't afford it. It's just that it's expensive. But also as a emperor or king or ruler or whatever, 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 the important person, you need some amount of pomp and circumstance. That's right. Like, that's like right. your people need to see you as like that, even though it's kind of wasteful of money. 
yeah, I guess if you are unable to drop loads of money on these like big ceremonies, then people are like, does he have power? Like, is is he our important? country doing well? Yeah. Like, yeah. So there's some element like you need to do this to stay in power, even if you like kind of can't afford it. Okay. My follow up on this is why is Duke Leto Atreides concerned about this? Like, is the emperor like saying like, I send a convoy and I want you to pay for it? Or no, 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 the emperor should be paying for their convoy. In which case, why does the Duke care? He should only That's be concerned about the time wasted. That's right. So maybe we there's something about the financing we're not understanding. Yeah. Where he's like, in the middle of the ceremony, he should be like in the game, diplomatic right. game, and he's worried about the Excel spreadsheet of the finances of the ceremony. It's so on his mind that that is what he's asking as they're walking down the ramp. So if he's paying for it, it's a problem. If the emperor is paying for it, it's not his problem. Not his problem. But it sounds like the emperor is paying for this trip. Yeah. So why does Duke care? Maybe it's taken out of his tax revenue. Or sorry, his allocation revenue from so, Which means Central. that he's paying for it. Which means get me an email. <laughs> Send me an email. Let me go do something else. I don't really want to be wearing here in this dress uniform. I want to be at home and not pants on. Okay. Well, that... <laughs> but if he did that, then... Maybe, maybe the em the empire is like this guy doesn't like ceremonies. We need to force him to do ceremonies to solidify his power. They're actually doing him a favor. That's right. You force him to do ceremonies one because it looks good for his community to see mm -hmm. that the duke is doing ceremonies because like the pomp and circumstance. Also, as a sign of submission, like you don't like doing ceremonies. Like, well, you're loyal to me, right? 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 Yeah. We're doing ceremonies. We're doing ceremonies. So it's actually helping him in a weird sort of way. Plus power All right. move. All right. Okay. But he's still nervous about it because, like, you know, he's worried about finances. Yeah. All right. So bean he's counter. Doing bean counter. Rule the people over with the beans. Spreadsheeter. Spreadsheets. Okay. And then we're inside the castle and we see the Gurney Yalik teaching um, Paul how to fight. Okay. So the, the shield, if you swing your blade quickly, it bounces back blue. And if you go in slowly, it comes through red, and then you can actually attack someone. Yep. I, I get it. I get it. So, like, if you have something fast, it bounces off. That's great. Super cool. The guns don't work. Okay, cool, cool. But what I don't understand is how does this actually translate into, like, harming someone? Because you can't, like, you can't, like, thrust at them because then the shield, shield bounces off. So then you got to, like, slice people. But you can't slice fast because then the shield should stop it. So you, like... You press your blade into them and then like slowly pull. Like, is that how this combat works? So, so I guess you want to get to the edge of the shield fast. And then once you're at the shield, you want to move slowly. So, so, so it's you, like a, it's like a fast strike. And then when you get to the shield, right. you can't be fast anymore because you'll bounce. So you like yep. you go fast and then slowly in. Yeah. And you want to move as you want to move in slowly at the fastest speed possible. So it's. Right. Fast to the edge, and then as fast as you can in, and then stab. So like you push instead of like letting it glide slowly. Like you get in, but so the shield only stops things from the if it's fully outside of the the shield. So you're saying once you're once if the sword has penetrated through the shield uh -huh. and it's in red mode, can I now thrust at full speed? God damn it! <laughs> okay. Yep. Cool. Yep. I mean. So, and, but my or do I have is, to continue at the slow speed? Yes, this is exactly what I thought. Because here, like in the palm of Paul's hand, yeah, mm -hmm. the sword's through the shield. But through the outside here and on the thumb, yeah. the sword is in the shield. And so it should be grabbed by the blue part. Yeah, so if you tried to, if you tried to move it lateral, like side to side here, it would, it, would, like it, would it be able to move side to side quickly? Or would he be like moving against the blue? Right. Like shoving your hand into ooh, black. I don't know. The, the yeah, like like stuff. molasses or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It would just be really much more reasonable. Yeah. yeah, right? So then how does this actually translate into combat? Like, I just need to poison tip my blades, I guess? Like, I guess, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was thinking you you still want to use guns. I was thinking. Heck so yeah. you, 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 you do high mass projectiles at people. Okay. It, it hits the shield, cannot penetrate, bounces off, and the shield shields the person from the large mass but the acceleration internally scrambles them you know essentially you get this like liquefaction inside the 
the shield that the shield fully protected you, but you're inside the shield and you were accelerated, damage done. So you're saying if it was like the 1400, 600, what a medieval Europe, if like if you try to stab some or slash someone that was wearing the knight's armor, like it's just your, your sword is going to bounce off the armor. However, right. if you could grab them and shake them, like they would get concussions. And if you shook them really hard enough, they break bones and bleed and stuff. That's what you're saying. You're saying hit someone with a bullet that's so big, like a huge cannonball. And even yeah. though the cannonball will bounce off of them, like there'll be so much shock to them, they'll die. Yeah, anyway. Exactly. And then I guess the, that that could be effective. I guess also if you had smaller caliber weapons, if you could hit them a bunch of times, is that going to degrade the shielding or yeah, is overload it just, the shield? Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, there's got to be some type of battery or something in here, and it's like there's only so much so much damage that it can take before it just overloads, right? Yeah. I mean, I just find it hard to believe that everybody in the universe is like, we're just going to swords. That's what we're doing because shields. Like shields, yeah. I nobody want guns. nobody tries want... to out engineer it. Right. Yeah. I want well, at least want long range. Okay, okay. I... Even if you don't have long range, but if you have a sword that has a gun built into it, so you're like slowly into their shields and you're like, What? <laughs> like I got you now, bitch. Yeah. Boom. You like pull a trigger from inside the shield. That's right. So you stab, boom, which then creates a hollow opening. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the blue is on the outside, you got, you can and then pull it through into the person. Yeah. Gun blades, perfect. God, that would be cool martial arts. Mm -hmm. I'd watch that anime. I'd play that video game. Mm -hmm. Doesn't feel like Dune, though, but pretty cool. It could be like Dune 3 when technology has advanced. <laughs> Stagnant for like <laughs> thousands of years. And like... We'll see this later. They have super advanced technology like laser cannons and all kinds of orbital yeah, stuff. Yeah. But then they're fighting with swords. It's Weird. What is going on? Weird. Weird. And they're like running around instead of using like shoes that have wheels and the heels that would be perfect you traverse large distances very smoothly yes on the sand <laughs> okay okay you, you got a good point <laughs> pave your roads arrakis okay um so this is the, the same scene um and they're fighting i can't remember the old guy's name fighting paul and do we do they not have any training sessions where they like warm up and do you know the basic fundamental movements or is it just always be ready for death Let's watch. Like, what is that? Like, his shield wasn't even on. His shield wasn't on. Can you imagine, like, telling the Duke, like, oh, yeah, your son got, like, his hamstring cut with my sword because I threw it at him yeah. and I missed because I also wasn't warm. Actually, you know I bet Gurney Alec, I bet he warmed up outside. <laughs> he, like, like before going into the room, he's, like, doing squats and, like, lunges and, like, yeah. doing some jumping jacks, getting ready to fight. And Paul's in here getting coffee. He just, he just woke up. It's just, yeah, I mean... This the 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 teacher is an old guy, so he's got to warm up. He doesn't want to get That's injured. Right. He, if he That's wants right. to be ready, he's got to for death at all times. He's got to warm up. But even for young people in their twenties, you still have to warm up. You, people pull muscles all the time. Oh yeah. Like yep. If you pull a hammy, you're not going to be combat ready. That's worse. And even if you like you like you're young and you can just do it, just force it with your body. Like scar tissue accumulates. Like That's you, right. You lose limber, limberity, limberness. You lose Limber. flexibility. Yeah. Like you, you're just gonna have a harder time as an adult, as like an older adult surviving this stuff. That's right. So you gotta take care of your body. You can't be like diving into life and death battle during your morning coffee. You can't, you, you can't you, be doing do you have that. To, do you have to always be ready for combat? For like, there's always life or death, and it's always life or death combat. Yeah. It's not even like light combat. Like no one's gonna beat you up and be like, like ah, prove my point. Like no, no, it's life or death all the time. Like how That's, do you, how do you eat? Or yeah. poop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or, so you eat a funky burrito one day, and then you're on the the toilet with some bad diarrhea. I mean, that like, are, that already might be a life and death. <laughs> and the teacher comes in, kicks the door in. He's like, "Be ready, be you're, ready." You're like spraying the walls with diarrhea. You're like, "I am not ready for this." <laughs> I'm not ready. You activate your shield, and it's yeah. like the spray is too much energy, so it gets reflected back in. Oh, it's like all accumulating and it's That's filling right. up your shield. Oh. <laughs> Can we can we make some ground rules about the training, please? <laughs> oh, no. put a, put a, can we can we put a lock on this bathroom? I'm so tired of this. <laughs> yeah. can can I, like, I got the keys. Yeah. <laughs> no. Always be ready. Assassins Always are everywhere. Be ready. 
They're in the walls. Actually, they are on the walls. They're on the walls. We'll, we'll see that later. Yeah. Let's finish the fight. The slow blade penetrates the shield. Yep. Slow that feels like penetrates the shield. That feels like basic knowledge at that point. What's he's like every training <laughs> session? He's like it yeah. penetrates the shield slowly. He's like, dude, I know. We've been doing this for ten years. Dude, I know, but also the slow blade got through his shield, so apparently he didn't know how to defend it. He was not ready. That's that's true. Also, can you just can I just have two shields? <laughs> right? Well, double stack them? Okay. Yeah, yeah, just like a shield inside of a shield, like a Russian doll. Sure, right? Why are we single yeah. shielding? That's right. You could like layer shielding, do funky things with it. If you did funky shielding, when somebody thinks they need to go fast and then slow through. If you mess with the parameters, maybe the speeds all change and they hit a hit, they hit a wall when they're trying yeah. to penetrate. Yeah. Because you change the characteristics. Yeah. Then you want to randomize them so that yeah. anybody trying to penetrate, they can't use the same technique every time. That's right. The chaos has to be your your fighting style has to be too chaotic. Chaotic, yeah. Make be non predictive. Oh gosh. So okay, okay. So Paul is learning from Gurney Alec, Gurney, yeah. Gurney something. He's learning how to fight in the Atreides fashion. But how yeah. good would the Atreides combat style fare against the Harkonnen? Because like they're really disparate forms of martial arts. Like their planets don't talk to each other. Like at least here in in Earth, we have like various types of martial arts, and we have cross martial arts tournaments, and so like they get to see each other, right? But this is like this is like truly cultures that have never interacted with their martial arts, like. Gurney Alec is very good at defending against Paul's attacks because he knows what's in Paul's mm -hmm. skill sets. But if you're finding if you're fighting an effectively foreign or alien group, how good can your martial arts combat be? So I guess the question is, is this martial art like this very practical, you know, as soon as we get new information about the enemy's like skills and tactics, we immediately adapt? Or is it more like a ceremonial artistic martial arts where it's like we're going to form our style but we're not really talking about combat here or is it somewhere in between if they're in like this like ceremonial battle style where they're not adapting that could be quite dangerous i mean this is effectively a boxer versus a kickboxer you're like put your hands up and then they come at you with the kick you're like what the heck i didn't know that was coming yeah like because like, boxing is a sport and so right, you train ceremonial. for boxing it has rules Right. And so does kickboxing, actually. There's no, like, nut shots, I don't think. Um, is there nut shots? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But there are rules. So if you're training for a specific set of rules and the other people don't follow it, you could be in serious trouble. So, yeah, so, like, MMA. MMA is, like, supposed to be the best martial arts form. Like, it's, it's like, anything. But there's still rules. Like, yeah. imagine if you're in an actual street fight and you're, like, MMA rules, MMA rules, and then someone pulls out a knife. Like, right. Yeah, they're going to probably win. And even if they you win, you're going to get sliced and diced. It's very dangerous. Right. And then the person's like, it's a knife fight rules. And then the person pulls out a gun. Right. And you're like, person pulls out a gun. Like, oh, it's a suicide vest rules. Beep, 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 boop. You're like, what the heck? What the heck? We came in here with this. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I Yeah, you can get blindsided by tactics and all kinds of stuff. All right. It's a good point. It's a good point. We'll see how effective they're... Do we see combat? We'll see how effective their combat oh, is we upcoming. Do. <laughs> we do. Yep. yep. The entire planet sees combat and then they're gone. Okay, so this is the space, I guess, hyperlane. I think I call that a hyperlane. I don't know space what it's tube? actually called. Space tube. Space tunnel. Space it's colon. Colon. Yep. I like that one. <laughs> and so, yeah, yeah. This is the planet. I think we're still on the Atreides planet. Mm -hmm. And then I guess this over here. Oh, oh, is that another planet over there? Yeah, it is. It is. Are we literally seeing like through the tube, like through yeah. the fabric of space to the other yeah. object? So it looks like if we follow, if we just take a velocity vector normal to the screen right now. Right into it. And just head in through there. I don't, doesn't look like I need to be high on drugs to get through this, right? I mean, it wouldn't hurt. I would. In fact... It looks so simple that I could be on all kinds of drugs and yep, I looks like I'm going to make it. That's right. Yeah. So this is making me feel like the Mentats don't really need to be on drugs. In fact, look how, look how smooth this flight is. So smooth. 
They're just, just zipping right through. Not a problem. So I guess one thing I could think of is like, okay, maybe from the outside looking through the tube, it looks nice mm -hmm. and clean. But if you're in the tube, it's actually quite overwhelming and scrambled. And the only way to understand that is using the hallucinations through spice. So when you're actually, if you're actually in that ship in the middle of the tube, it's incomprehensible. It's only comprehensible when looking from the outside. Isn't there stuff in GR where it's like you're looking at a black hole from the outside, it looks one way, but if you're right next to the black hole, it's totally different, um, even though it's the same space? That's true. You get weird things for like time dilation. For example, like when you pass the event horizon, your time, like when people watch you, you get frozen in time. And when you look out, you see the evolution of the entire universe, like weird stuff like that. Yeah. And so I guess, I guess thinking about that now, what happens to you when you are just crossing that boundary? Like, like, like say you fall into the, a black hole sideways, does your right eye get frozen? And then your left eye can see everything. Like maybe, maybe, maybe that's what they need. They need drugs because when they're flying through the ship, like the front head of their, the front part of their brain is going to go through the wormhole before the back head, back of their brain. And so in order to keep that all together and functioning as a navigator, then you need the spice that makes your brain do super fast connections, which we interpret as hallucinations. Okay. Okay. Maybe. 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 And I, it doesn't look like they're navigating in between stars here. It looks like they just have a wormhole <laughs> that right? bypasses the whole problem altogether. You get a tunnel by one planet and a tunnel by another planet and you just go in the tunnel. Go in the tunnel, yeah. Like, so I don't know I what hope, the star thing is. Yeah, hopefully we'll learn more about this and the interstellar travel because this is, just looking at it, looks fine to me. Maybe the Mentats, yeah, okay, I'm still thinking that they're taking advantage of the Emperor. Like, we need these <laughs> drugs to navigate between the stars. And the, and the, navig and the Emperor is like, I'm not an astronomer. I don't know what it's like. Yeah. Okay, I guess so. Okay, okay. I also like spice. I like spice. Mind game. Mind game. So on the planet Atreides, I forgot the name of the planet. Um, Arrakis. Arrakis. No, Arrakis is the planet that they go to, the sand planet. Anyway, anyway. Oh. so Okay, the Atreides planet, right? the original one. The original planet, the Bending Jesuit comes down to test Paul to do some mind games. I hold at your neck the poison needle. The test is simple. An animal caught in a trap will gnaw off its own leg to escape. What will you do? Do you really want to ask that question? Because like, <laughs> you, gotta, you got my death right next to my head. Like, If you think an animal will gnaw off their own leg, like, oh, but I will gnaw off your leg. <laughs> you're, you're about to kill me. That's right. He could go and you don't know how you react in a life and death situation. He could attack. That's right. Now, this the twenty year old Paul is attacking this old woman and like beating her. He's in like, fact, if he's already for if he's always ready for combat, he's got his knife to her stomach right now. That's true. He should be always packing because he never knows when Gurney's going to come in. He could, Gurney could attack right now. This could be Gurney wearing like a mask. He does like a Mission Impossible, just rips off the mask, and this is actually him. He yeah. always got to be ready, Paul. So is Paul not able to prepare, train mentally for this mind game? Or do they just spring it on him and the, he is going to react how he's going to react? It seems absurd. He, get, he gets prepped a little bit by his mom when she's like, do whatever they say. He's like, what? <laughs> and then go in there and close the door behind him. But they're expecting him to react. I mean, yeah, he could kill her. That's right. He could die and now your progeny is dead like what what, what kind of rite of passage is this it's madness yeah, it is madness or is it a fake out there's not actually poison on the thing that would be fun it's actually like a feather she's like oh you failed <laughs> yeah you failed and then the hand in the box you give him lots of pain so essentially torture mm -hmm. and then you want him to grit his teeth and not react in any way during the torture? That, that that seems impossible. Like, if I'm a good leader, gosh, is passing the torture box test essential for making me a good leader? Or is it just not an essential skill? It I I think actually it's detrimental. 
right? Because there are things that are risky and that if, like that, and you may feel pain, but then you're not getting that feedback of like, I'm experiencing pain. I should stop doing this. I am. Exp and, and then you don't learn lessons of like, this thing caused me pain. I should avoid that from the future. This is an actual person. This is an actual person who like, doesn't feel the either pain or they don't feel fear. I think they I've had heard to, like, this before. They had to like logically, she had to logically teach herself to like avoid situations because she kept putting herself in bad situations and then encountering like trouble. So like if your brain is not functioning with reasonable amounts of like fear responses, pain responses, like like the information from the environment saying like, don't do this, then actually this could be really bad. Also, this is only physical pain. What about testing Paul for emotional pain? Like show him like a picture of his like childhood dog and like he like breaks down. Like, like that's also not good for a leader, right? Oh, so you're endorsing not only physical torture, but psychological torture as well. That's right. The Bene Gesserit okay. would do much better if I was in charge, but I'm a man. I can't be in there. <laughs> so the Bene Gesserit just goes around torturing all the future leaders yep. psychologically and physically until they're just yep. a shell of themselves and like cowering in a corner and they control everything. We should also add financially. <laughs> like you, you sp spend the summer and you can't make rent. What are you going to do, Paul? <laughs> oh, this is getting a little too real here. Whoa. But you're testing. She's testing, she's testing him to be a leader of the entire empire. Uh, give him rent problems. <laughs> <laughs> the emperor needs to be in charge of the finances of the entire empire. He needs to know how to balance checkbook. <laughs> you're like sitting him down doing economics. Like Paul, you must always be ready for economics. Right. You must always be ready for combat, even yep. on the toilet. Yep. You must always be ready for psychological torture. Without yep. prep, he must always be ready for financial problems. Yep. Maybe that's why uh, the king, or is it the duke? Sorry, the duke is thinking about the spreadsheet during a ceremony because <laughs> he's, he's always, always got to be ready. <laughs> yep. Because he's an effective leader, and he's always always thinking about these things. Yeah. The Benny Gesserit is like he's the, they're in, they're gnawing in the back of his mind. Like, is this a test? Am I ready? Const constantly, constantly mm -hmm. there. He's like on the on the verge of a breakdown because of all the torture he's been through. Stoneface. Stone Stoneface. Stoneface. So right after this, Paul and his mother talk, and they're somehow outside, if I remember. Yeah, yeah, outside, super foggy. She's like walking around by herself, and he's just hanging what out does there. What you mean? That I could be the one. You heard. The Benedictine serve as powerful partners to the great houses. Why not? You don't know it. It's all part of the plan. What? What? There's... They're so far apart. They're like, they're like 30 feet apart. <laughs> like, she, so she's walking through the fog thinking about whatever happened. He's just hanging out here by himself because he's a teenager in the fog. And then she sees her son. She's like, I'm going to whisper to you from very yeah, far I, away. I'd like to come in here. Paul. Paul. Something just happened, Paul. And it's foggy. It's, it's not like they can even rip lead, but they can't even lip read because they're like mm -hmm. in this foggy stuff. What are they doing? So like 30 feet apart, whispering into the fog. And all they hear these like from the other person. Like, I hope my mom understood what I was saying, but there's no way to know because I can't read her lips and I can't hear yeah. her either. And I can barely hear her. I can barely hear her. Do they have mind reading? No. They got that like hand thing, but that's sign language. That's not mind reading. That's not, yeah, that's not mind reading. So, but even if they did hand stuff, it's foggy night. What are they going to see? That's right. You want to like misread a hand sign and be like, "Oh, that's offensive." Why are you saying that, Mom? I did the thing for you. So, could it be that they are actually at the appropriate volume because there's like the sound is pro <gasps> projecting straight to the other person and not getting saying. dispersed into the fog. So I've gone to like public parks and also science museums where they have these like dome structures. You like you yeah. stand inside of it and it's like this essentially like a dish, like a satellite dish. Yeah, and it like is, focuses yeah. your sound. Super cool. So you can like hear very clearly what somebody's saying like 60 feet away. But maybe that's there in the structure. Maybe they're in like a dome, I guess, maybe. But well, where normally, are they? Right normally now? they're like right. Or, normally these dishes are right around your head. Um, where are they right now? I have no idea. I guess it's not a fit in this case it wouldn't be a physical dish but some kind of special acoustical air configuration that is Whew. channeling the sound to each other so they can have whispers conversations 30 feet apart because <laughs> just walk up to him what are we doing we don't believe in chairs and tables we don't believe in chairs and tables 
We don't believe in chairs and tables. We don't believe in maybe walk going for a walk and and sit walking side by side in the park. Mm -hmm. No, we don't believe in that. No, we don't do that. We need to go to foggy, high tech, acoustic rooms to whisper at each other. Dimly lit. Yep. Also, it's foggy. Like, does that moisture in the air make it worse? Does it does make is it? Can people hear you better or worse if you're in fog? So my instinct is saying that fog makes sound traveling worse. Me for too. most frequent, for especially for higher frequencies, and the reasoning is, fog particles are little water droplets, which are mm-hmm. huge compared to air particles like nitrogen. So the sound is actually reflecting and being absorbed by those large particles. So the sound comes out and bounces all over the fog particles. Mm. So there's a lot of energy attenuation, and a lot of scattering. Which grabs energy out of the wave. That's that's my instinct, and and that's different than when you're underwater. Because underwater, you can hear things like super clearly. It's right. different than when you're underwater because in underwater you're you're in a liquid, and so all the molecules are like effectively hooked together. So if yeah. you pull one, then it immediately pulls the next one, which means you get a very fast, very rapid transfer and very right. like, very I guess good um, transfer of energy. But when you have gas, then all the gas molecules are bounced around. So it's weird directions. And so there's no guarantee that they're going to like propagate a sound in a particular direction. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's also my hunch. My hunch is that talking in fog is going to make communication worse because your sound just won't travel as far. Yeah. So this is like, they can't see each other's facial expressions. They're 30 feet away. They're in fog. What is this? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> hey, why they just, just walk up to your kid. Just he just had a traumatic experience. Just walk up and give him a little hug and talk to him. That's right. He's just been tortured. That's right. Actually, this should have been this is this should have been the torture. The, like, like we show you a vision of you being tortured, and your mom doesn't help you. Mom doesn't help you. Oof, that would hurt. Oof, oof. It's just all part of the game. The Game of Thrones. Okay, so this is on Arrakis. They have the helicopter bug things. They look like they should have tons of vibration, yet when you're in the cabin, super smooth. Look at that. And then, oof, so smooth. So I see eight wings. So there looks like there's eight ball and socket joints for each wing, up and down. Probably maybe also rotation, because you need to... Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. You need to change the angle of attack for the wing as it goes in Otherwise, the up stroke versus the up downstroke. Force. Otherwise, the up force and the down force equal out, then you don't get anywhere. Yeah, yeah so because if you look at like, like a bird down. flapping or like a, a f- insect flapping, there's like all kinds of rotational yeah. bendy stuff going on to get the flight to be just right. So these are, this is super complicated engineering, lots of vibration, lots of moving parts, and yet all of that is damped down so that the cabin is super smooth. Nobody is getting jostled around. It's not loud. It's insane. It's the technology is insane. And you're in a sandy environment. So all the grit and all the nasty sand in the lubricated parts, not a problem. This this tech is off the charts. Off from the my, charts. From what I understand about helicopters and sand this environments, sand just wrecks helicopters. It gets in there and then you have like moving pieces and it just grinds them apart. Right. So a helicopter is complicated, but this looks this looks even more complicated in my opinion. Yeah. Because this is not how we do helicopters. And there's a good reason because this is complicated. I mean, I mean I'm mean, i okay with there being tech that we haven't explored yet. Yeah. Other ideas. Sure. I, I'm totally cool with innovation. I worry about that this innovation wouldn't work. <laughs> I'm also... So I am also okay with cool tech like this that is way more advanced than we have. Mm-hmm. But then they use swords. That yeah. it, the, yeah. the contrast is jarring. Also, where did these come from? Like, the, did the Atreides family bring these from their home planet, or are these for this planet? Like, like the Emperor at some point had a group of people that made these for these, and these just live here on the planet all the time. So if I was making a machine for a desert planet, this is not the design I would go for. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think they're brought in from, they've got to be imported at least from elsewhere yeah, yeah, in the yeah, Imperium. Yeah. 
I'm yeah, yeah. I totally, totally agree. I don't think Arrakis has the technology, nor did they ever have the technology, technological people to build these things. Okay. What I'm asking about is, is did the Atreides family have control of these things from construction to all the way to now? Because if these are dedicated to the planet, like they belong to the planet as a decree mm-hmm. from the Emperor, then the Harkonnens had these, and the Harkonnens used these, and then the Harkonnens left these for the Atreides. There's no reason I should, as an Atreides person, there's no reason I should trust these things to not crash. And then now my my Duke is dead. Or even not the Duke, but like anyone who gets in these things, they're dead. And now, I mean, strategically, that's strategically to be so smart. Because then whoever is ruling the planet after me, after the Harkonnens, then like they, they're stuck to ground travel only. Like That would be so devastating on this planet. If I was the Atreides, I would want to bring in my own stuff. Yeah. And then if I'm using Harkonnen equipment, I would want my guys inspecting and signing off on all the equipment. Right. And I'm not just going to use Harkonnen material because they're they're trying to actively sabotage Anything 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 they touched, I'd be like, "Mm, not sure. So just like I'm moving into their palace, the whole palace needs to be inspected and fully cleaned and the whole thing before I set foot in there. Yeah. So that makes me think either these are Harkonnen st- things that actually, sorry, they were probably actually maybe Imperial. Some, that somehow then transfer before. from think, ruler to ruler. Right. And I, then but I think the Harkonnens used these before. Okay. So then I want, I would, I would expect Atreides, mechanics, maintainers, inspectors to have done a thorough inspection job on these. To have like taken it apart and reassembled. Essentially. Right. Yeah, before, of, before, before they did get there at all. Which, yeah. which I guess is maybe possible because there was that forward scouting party that came in. I, I mean, yeah. I thought it was mostly warrior people, but maybe they spent like um, field engineers, right? Like maybe okay. I mean, we think of like a forward scouting party as like soldiers, but maybe it's like a, some soldiers, but to defend all the support people, like maintainers, inspectors, mm-hmm. uh, mechanics. Yeah, I think- I think that's exactly right. You would send an excursion team, a recon team, I guess. I don't know. But it's like soldiers that make a perimeter. Then you get the engineers and the scientists in there. And like, man, that's, I, I get it. That makes sense. Yeah. So this is like, what? so the Harkonnen actually have a guy in the wall for an assassination attempt. They yeah. left behind. So they miss yeah. things. Would it? Would the Har- Harkonnen sabotage these craft? Absolutely. They totally would if they Absolutely, could. Absolutely, right? Right, right, right. Because yeah. then, because then, whoever comes in from the Atreides group, even if it's not the Duke, that the they cannot fly around. They cannot see if there's worm sign. Like the only way you can move around the planet is by like car on the ground that vibrates and the worms come attack it. Yeah. And if the Emperor is like, wait, hey, what, what the heck? And then you're like, hey, the Atreides people, they can't maintain it. That's their fault. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's all kinds of pol- politics that could revolve around these craft. That's a good point. So the craft look cool, but Super there's cool. actually a lot going on here in terms of politics and logistics and supplies and military just, capability. Just, physics, just how this thing flies at all. And just and just how this thing flies, absolutely. So super cool though. Yeah. Oh, super I'd cool. love to fly one. That'd be super cool. So yeah, this is the city, I guess the capital city of Arrakis, Arrakis City. I don't know if there's any other city, but but yeah, the capital city. Okay. It's so bleak. Like where you got you got loads of people doing spice mining, but the economy isn't just spice mining because people need to eat, people need fun times, they need hotels, they need travel. They, there's all kinds of additional economic activity that comes with a mining town. It, it's not like the people that live in the mining town are trading the spice with each other. Like, like the spice goes off planet. Right. Like they That's need right. to have their own economy in there. Yeah, but I don't see any colors. I don't see any fun. I don't see any parks. I don't see well, restaurants. This is it, what, like convenience stores, bodegas. Whoa, there's nothing. There's no like. <laughs> there's no like town square. There's no like market where people gather yeah. and have their like farmers market every Thursday. I love these things. Um, I my my defense in this is that the sun is super harsh, and okay. so everything you want everything to be covered and in, inside and like protected in the shade. So mm-hmm. this is all flat surfaces. I guess flat surfaces mm-hmm. are good against like sandstorms. Yeah. If you have things that poke out, then those get damaged. So flat surfaces and and hard surfaces 
that can mm-hmm. resist sandstorms. Um, and I guess that also means very little color. Yeah, okay. So if there's paint on the surfaces, then it would get blasted off by sand. At okay. least at some point, you know, 10 years, even if it lasts 10 years, pretty good. Yeah, really. not, not, worth, like not worth continuing to paint. Right. And then also, I don't know who's able to be outside here on top to see this stuff. Like, like if there's, if this was a, if this was like opened up to a staircase and you can climb out here and oversee the city and see all the colors, then like, sure. Yeah, that's beautiful. Right. But if mm-hmm. there's no access to the roofs, then who's ever sees that anyway. Mm. So, so you're saying that it's all, the city is like this because it needs to be protected from the sun and the blasting sandstorms. Yeah. And, and that's kind of also, oh, so and then equipment. also there's two, two logistical issues. One is that why, why beautify a part of the city that no one ever sees? Okay. And then the other one is where do we get pigments? So so we get a lot of pigments from like one for like our food coloring is like from mm-hmm. insects. Kind of weird if you think about it. Um, but then also there's like we'll take um, iron oxide and we'll with rust and we'll grind it up. And now you get this red paint. You can take lead oxide and then you get this beautiful white paint. And that's why we had lead paint in our homes or whatever. Dick. So I think this city looks like this for a couple of reasons. One is is structurally, I guess it needs to be like this hard surfaces that that can survive sandstorms also they need to be not they they don't need to be colorful because you don't really see like who has access to this thing um and then also it needs to be the city needs to be inside and protected from the sun because otherwise the sun's super hot and then the last question is where do you get pigmentation so so on earth we get like food coloring from insects it's kind of weird if you think about it and but also there are things like we can take rust we can take iron oxide and you grind up the rust and you make it into like this kind of well i guess a rust color it's like this orangey brown red colored and then you paint with it um, or you can take like like lead oxide and then you get or titanium oxide and you get these like really nice whites um, and that's why we had lead paint in our houses from whatever many decades ago and so on arrakis what where where could they get colors from all, all i all i know from arrakis is is sand and so maybe that's why their their stuff is all sand colored well i mean i think if they're exporting spice then they're making money yeah. they can import paints <laughs> yeah, yep, elsewhere. Yep. In fact, um, it's 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 the same ship. The ship takes spice away, comes back with paint. Right, and actually, we'll just come back with the goods that Arrakis needs to import in exchange for the spice. I guess it goes spice, money, and then goods. Yeah. But if it's sort of a free market system, the goods come in as they're paid for, and I guess it it. Now that makes sense. It's so a lot of the economy that is supporting the miners is underneath the city, or, or underneath so, the outside, it, right? It, underneath, yeah, like yeah, the underneath top the of the city. Yeah, I still think that a lot of people in the city would be like, "I'd like to go outside on like a nicer day, or so, at nighttime, or at nighttime." So there, there's not even there's not even like low density of like a park over here, a park over there, a square okay. over there for celebrations. It's like you're go, you're not going outside at all. Oof. Did you hear about they, the sandblasting windstorms? They might as well be in space. You, like, can't go outside or ever. Can't go outside. So, I mean, like, if you zoom out here and you look at the upper right, uh, there's this like hill, this rocky hill here. Yeah, this thing. It would be nice if I could, you could put a tram on there and go up to the yeah. top. You know, overlook the city, have a day. Why not? Mm-hmm. It, have a you day. couldn't do it every day, have but that would be nice. But sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. But, you, know, you like have a tram that goes up here or like a gondola. Yeah. Then you have a little ski yeah. slope down there. Oh, man, this would be a resort. Yeah. And people would want stuff like that. I mean, you couldn't do it every day. You could like check the weather. But, but like it's birthday not... treat? Heck yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But they're like, no, you must live in bleak. You must live under the dome. All Even times. the palace is kind of bleak. I mean, it's kind very bleak. functional. Right. Even in, okay, outside we said maybe it looks functional. But even inside, it's like really spartan. Yeah, it's and not much going on there. Not much going on. I don't didn't really understand that. Like, paint it. I mean, there's no sun exposure to paint on the inside, so paint the interior walls. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, you could have. In fact, you really should paint it like a nice, beautiful colors, because then it's good for psychology. Like, it makes you feel like it's a nice place. That's right. And if Give I'm the flowers. emperor, I get all kinds of extravagant stuff to show that I have power and have the ability to import. You know, yeah, flowers, paints, art. Yeah, and so they said that 
it's all right. The, they meaning like the storytelling in the movie said that whoever controls this planet get, gets so rich that the empire starts become the emperor starts becoming jealous. So actually, oh. like this person, whoever whoever runs this place, whether it's the Atreides or the Harkonnens, like they're rich. Like they they, they can get paint. So that might make sense if the 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 temp uh, sorry the um, palace here is bleak because there's import controls based on the emperor. But still, the townspeople would like, uh, you know, a park here and there. Yeah. So that doesn't like, have to be it's bleak. Like necessary for morale. Right. And that's not like having a nice gondola or park or a day off is not a threat to the emperor. In fact, not having that is more of a threat, I think. All right. That's how, that's how you get revolts. Right. Just, just bad working conditions. It's so bleak. What is this thing? Is that a train station? That's what it looked like to me. It looked like a monorail that they had been <laughs> they stopped building. Damn. Like, there's no other city. What are we doing? <laughs> does it have does the monorail have a view of the city? Shut it down! Shut it down. There could the be public. a nice view of the- Shut it down. Shut it down. The public may enjoy it. So bleak. So bleak. Okay. Oh, also, this is the moon of Arrakis. Is it Mars? Because wait, 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 wait! You're saying you're saying we're like this is from the perspective of someone on Arrakis looking up in the sky. They see these two things. That's right. So I think we're on okay, the surface okay, okay. of Arrakis, looking up at the moons of Arrakis. And there's two okay. of them, and I'm looking at this valley in the upper center of the image. That uh, looks like the Valis Marineris on this, Mars. This one? So yeah. So is this Mars? If we, I have an image here, if we go to the left. There's an image of Mars. Like that looks like. Maybe we can get some rotation. Oh, okay. Some I, 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 I got you. I got an idea. Okay. 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 Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Rotate into position. Position. Like there. Yeah. yeah. Okay, but also, okay. also, let's okay. make it smaller. Yeah. Because I only need, in. I only need this much. Focus in. Getting okay. better. Okay, maybe a little bit more rotation. A little bit more. I got gotcha. you. A little tiny bit more. A little tiny bit. Okay. All right. Maybe, maybe a little bit of size. A little bit of size. And that's that is that is it right there. Oh right? my gosh, that's that. I mean the. Just the the edges of the valley itself match right up, and. There's the two valley component to it. Plus the little like third valley component. Du- double bubble. Double bubble. So is this Mars? Mars has been moved this thing. as a moon of Arrakis. Oh, interesting. So you're saying you're saying in the future, for whatever reason, there was some reason where like our Mar- our Mars, our Mars from our solar system got flung out to Arrakis and now it orbits Arrakis. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean it's right there. That's it. Interesting. But there's additional features, so Mars features. has been altered. Maybe there was like a war or something, or maybe maybe we figured out how to hydro engineer to to put water on Mars, and so then we mm-hmm. got a new valley. But yeah. then and then a redried out, redried out. This is <laughs> interesting. Yeah, super super weird. I wonder what the lore is for this. Yeah, if anybody in the comments knows the lore of of, of why this moon is like this, that it's Mars. Uh, yeah. Tell us the the Dune lore. Yeah, let us know. That's some planet moving dude. What technology. a sniper! You saw this map. <laughs> cool. For some reason, it just clicked. The thing that clicked for me is the sand shower. What do they say about this hellhole again? It's a shower. You scrub your ass with sand, my lord. That's what they say. They're saying it looks like it's like a bad thing, but I think that would work. I, I think work. that would work. I mean, we have sandblasting for yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah. For taking paint <laughs> dial, off of stuff. <laughs> dial so if down you the di- pressure. If you, di- like, yeah, <laughs> you, know, you dial in the pressure and the grain yeah, yeah. size. To human that. level. Yeah. To human yeah. level, and then you just make a, a sandblast bidet. Yeah, make your day. I mean, yeah, yeah. So instead of having like sharp, like aluminum oxide little shards, mm-hmm. you make it like microplastic pellets. And like, right. yeah, you, I mean, I mean, effectively, that's exfoliating. You like, you rub your skin, yeah. and you like, you take off the outer layer. Like that, that's this, right? Right. And if it works, in fact, 
In fact, you could have things that are like microporous. So that if there is bacteria that like grabs them up and then flings them into the sun, flings them into the sand and they bake, they they bake outside and die. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. So they're saying it's like a bad thing. Like you scrub your ass with sand, but like maybe that's just, yeah, that's just the culture here and it works. Yeah. It's like asking somebody on Dagobah, like, how do you wash yourself with water? Well, look at this idiot. He's using the resources available. No, but it's the resource available and it works. Yeah. And so on Arrakis, they use sand. Like, what's the problem? And probably over time, you build up enough calluses, it doesn't hurt. Yeah, callus that asshole. Yep. This guy's just a bigot. Yeah. He's and got he's, a he's soft, namby-pamby soft, asshole. Soft, pampered, gentle, water, water-loving water butt. That's right. Soft as hell. Come on, Duke. You have to be ready for, for clean cleanliness. I mean, actually... The Fremen might be more ready for an attack on the toilet because their asshole is calloused up and ready for action. That's right. Whereas his soft, pampered asshole, mm-hmm. if he ever has a you know a bad soft. day on the toilet, it's, you know he's going to die. Can't handle it. Pathetic. So actually, it's a compliment. That's right, and a security risk for him not to do it. That's right. He's not ready at all times. So now that they're leading this planet, they get a new housekeepers. Candidates for a housekeeper, my lady. So Lady Jessica is looking over new housekeepers, but didn't she have a housekeeper back home? Like, did, did that person just lose their job? Like, like, like we were in charge of the new planet. See you later. Like, get a new job. Sorry. Sorry. Bye. So, so first bring, question. Bring do your they housekeeper keep, with you. Do they keep the old property? I don't know. I mean, pro- I, I guess. I mean, so I don't know. I don't know because it's their planet. Like they're put in charge of it. Like their families are put in mm-hmm. charge of it. But also now the emperor's now said, go be in charge of this other place. And from what I can tell, it looks like they made a permanent move. So, and that makes sense because the, if the emperor or the imperium is worried about families getting too powerful, they wouldn't want them to have multiple planets. Multiple planets. So this must be a permanent transfer. In which case, the staff is coming with you. Yeah, yeah. One because you know, like you got to keep you got to support them. They can't just abandon mm-hmm. them. They like we're loyal to you for whatever many decades. You don't just drop them off. Mm-hmm. But also because they were loyal to you for many decades. Like who yeah. are these new people? Like they could be Harkonnen sympathizers. So you That's bring funny. the people that are going to handle your, like your bed sheets and your food and like the, everything around you. You bring people you trust. That's right. So even if they kept both planets, and even if they needed staff to uh, man the previous planet, you would still bring your most loyal people with you so you wouldn't need to hire locals for this these security risk positions. That's right. I would take my staff back home and then do like every, from the, rank them by seniority and then every other is coming with me, everyone else gets promoted. Yeah, yeah. So I, sh- I wouldn't want to hire, if I needed to hire local people for my household staff, I would create lots of rites of passages and loyalty tests until they got to a position where they're near me as right. a leader. Probably for the first member. several years, maybe even decades, like the local yeah. people have outside jobs. Yeah. So they can, they, outside the te- outside the palace or maybe inside the palace, but like border stuff, the things that are important. Yeah. Like I don't yeah. want you handling my water supply. Like, yeah. Why, why are we, why is she hiring local people who are not, don't have, haven't passed loyalty tests for like personal household people? No, 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 no. Security no, no, problems. No, 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 no. That's how you get things like assassination attempts. This is weird to me. Let's watch. It's weird. Parched, nutrient poor landscape. Terrifying. First of all, Paul sees that. That's incredible vision. It's incredible awareness. He's ready for anything. He's ready to fight at any moment. I'm oh, I'm scared of bugs. Creepy. I'm scared of bugs for a reason. So creepy. Like, I'm not scared of bugs like I have to be out of my mind scared. But, like, I would like some distance between me and the cockroach. Right. It's not a, it's not a, cockroach it's not a me. phobia. It's, it's a naturally, like, ingrained human instinct to be, like, something that's not human weird. Because you don't yeah. know what it is. It could be poisonous. It could be dangerous. I don't know. It's just creepy crawly. You don't like it. So why is Paul stepping towards it 
Why isn't he leaving the room? And why doesn't the assassin send swarms of these? Are these like prohibitively expensive to manufacture? So I think Paul does not have a fear of response. Let's last this last little bit. He just, he just, he, no uh, reaction. Oh, yeah. Like this needle thing in his eye, like, like this, it's one of the most vulnerable parts of a human body. And it's like yeah. right there. And he's just like, whatever, it's fine. Like, I don't feel anything. Like Paul, like, you need to have some type of survival reaction. Yeah. And in fact, maybe the Bezzy Gen Benny Jenner, Jesuit and sure. The getting ready for being attacked to death at all times has made him lack fear, proper fear response. Like, like a healthy fear response. Right. So this now is, this is so close to his eye that he can't focus on it. I right. think the normal, like, I think, I think the normal thing would be to step back so I can see what it is. Right. Even if I'm not scared about it, I want to see it. I want right. to see it. Right. So I can assess what it is. But he saw it before and it's got a needle. He, that could permanently oh, blind you that. at best. Right. What is he doing? What is he doing? And then, okay, okay, let's go back to what you said. Like, why doesn't the assassin, it turns out there's only one assassin, but mm -hmm. why doesn't the assassin just have two of these things? And right. then while one, one mosquito-y thing is like at his eye, just get him in the back of the head. Right. So Paul somehow knows that there's only one. He's not right. scared there's right. like five. Right. right. He should be expecting a second one. And so maybe there's only one assassin and for, for some technological reason, you can only have one, one seeker guy per, per assassin. We'll just put two assassins in the building. What are we doing? Right. You, you have them next to each other and they're like, Hey, let's go attack this one guy right now. Okay. Like, yeah. You're going to get him from the front. I'll get him from the back. Done. Yeah. And I guess I'm not seeing why a single person can't control a swarm of these things, but assuming that's impossible, you put two. That's right. Oh man. Imagine if they had, so they have enough tech to make these things. Imagine if they just had a little bit more so that one person could control five at a time. You, you like, right. you like, Hey, these five little bug guys go into this room and then you guys sort yourself out. You swarm attack, do whatever right. you need. Yeah. That, you that would like, be undefensible. Yeah. You could have pre-programmed attack patterns, for example. Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah nothing, nothing fancy, just pre-programmed attack patterns. And so if he's in this position, he is now getting attacked from behind. I mean, not many animals or machines would be able to attack, defend an attack from five different directions. Like you, you just That's can't right. sense that many things. And so, yeah. So somehow this he so somehow Paul's confidence is only one, and right. somehow for some reason House Harkonnen only sent one. But they don't have they can't they don't I guess they only have like single digit number of these things, so they are really precious. Uh, very confusing to me. Uh, the technology in this universe is all over the place. All over the place. Yeah, in fact, in fact, gosh, anytime I go into a battle, I'm sending a team of these guys to just hang out in the back, send you little, little insect guys in and just take out people. Imagine if there's like a fight and people are like sword fighting explosions and nobody's looking for these little bugs. I mean, even if you were looking for them, with all the chaos going on around, I don't know if you could see them. These are the ultimate weapons. Yeah, you send like you have like people in the back of the battle, like stay in the helicopter barriers, just stay back the, here. Yeah, right. And you, they, if they can only send one at a time per person, uh, they send time. them. Time. They just go pick people off on the battle. I mean, pick they're fighting with swords. That's right. Yeah. Even if like like later on, Duke Leto gets one in his back and he like can't reach it mm -hmm. imagine like the leader of the both armies are fighting each other and then your your guy sends a little needle dude to the guy the back of the other guy then he's like trying to deal with yeah. it and then and then your leader just poke, 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 done well, it's even worse than that because they have the battle armor that could go in slowly you can only yeah. go in slowly so yeah. that the bug can get to there fast assess and then when the person is at at rest you just you just glide right in and kill and the bug is inside the armor now, so it can go full speed. Slice, dice, juice him up. Ooh. This tech, what is going on? Weird, weird applications. It's like they don't understand the how their own tech would work. Like they don't yeah. optimally use their own tech. That's right. Well, I mean, they are fighting with swords, so it has to be true. Yeah, but they, yeah, they, yeah, they don't have the innovation mindset. 